You know, at this point, I'm really struggling to make all of these motherboard videos stand out. And when MSI sent over the MSI X670E Tomahawk for me to review, I was like, I mean, it's awesome and all, but again, it's yet another mid-range AM5 motherboard. And thankfully, at least it's a pretty good mid-range AM5 motherboard. Starting off, as usual, CPU power. Here we have 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phases, rated at a maximum of 80 amps, with two full 8 pins for CPU power as well. And honestly, I don't know why I always start off with a VRA because it really doesn't matter nowadays. Like, sure, it's definitely not competitive to other offerings at a similar price point, which offers 16 plus 2 plus 1 configurations, at least. But as long as the VRM cooling solution is good enough that it doesn't create a bottleneck, it should be fine. And after testing, it does appear that, guess what? MSI didn't mess up sticking some heat sinks to the CPU power delivery, so... Good job there, guys. Then, moving down to PC expansion, here things are also pretty standard for a motherboard of this caliber, with a primary PC Gen 5 slot, with two additional physical 16x slots below that that are, in reality, Gen 4x4 and Gen 4x2, respectively, with, of course, a tiny PC Gen 3 1x slot as well, for good measure. And that also probably doesn't matter, because if we're being honest, you probably aren't putting anything other than a graphics card in your new build. And the M.2 storage is also just okay, with a primary PC Gen 5 slot and three additional Gen 4 slots as well. Though unfortunately, we only see four SATA connectors, which I still think is unacceptable, especially in an X670E motherboard. Does it really matter to most people? No, it really doesn't, but again, it's about a principle here, okay? Though coming back to the M.2 for a second, strangely all but the bottom M.2 slot come with a heatsink of some kind. Which doesn't look kind of weird, but oh well. Most NVMe SSDs contain their own heatsinks nowadays anyway, and if you are interested, the primary included heatsink is still good enough to keep a high-speed SSD cool. Finally, moving to the rear I.O., which probably makes the biggest difference to your day-to-day -day life, here it's also, well... Kind of average. While it's mere six USB Type A ports are definitely not impressive, seeing what other competitors are doing, what is impressive, however, is the fact that they're all USB Gen 3 or faster. Plus, the fact there are two USB Type C ports here, with one of them being 20 gigabit, is pretty awesome. Apart from that, you also have all the other standard trimmings with both integrated HDMI and DisplayPort. 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi Fi 6E, and a full array of audio options. So, pretty much the only thing I can complain about with the rear IO is, I don't know, the fact it doesn't have PS2, I guess? Okay, okay, in all seriousness, the rear IO is pretty fantastic and definitely a standard feature for this motherboard. And you would expect it to be good given how this motherboard will set you back. $300, which while it does sound like a lot, keep in mind it is still an X670E motherboard. However, it does have some very, very stiff competition, such as the cheaper X670 Aeros Elite, or the identically priced X670E Steel Legend from ASRock. Both of them have their own strengths and weaknesses, when for example, they both have much better CPU power delivery and a lot more USB Type A ports. However, at $300 in a vacuum, it is still a pretty good motherboard. And MSI's almost signature minimalism here, with a complete lack of RGB and a very minimalist overall aesthetic, is definitely appealing to a lot of people. But whatever, if you want to buy this motherboard yourself, then Amazon and UEG links to it are going to be down in the video description below. And while you're here, maybe also check out our Patreon, because without your support, videos like these don't exist, while you get awesome perks as well. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Just to Rage, Ella Vroniak, Paolo Shvoka, not a pseudonym, Nick Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Level Up. But anyway, that's about it, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.